Hi, this is Cycle 2, Week 9 Science. This is it. This is the one we have all been waiting for. Rockets. It gets no better. I promise this is the experiment demonstration of demonstrations. Your kids are going to love it. And I would also go so far as to say that science is clearly cool. And if you are not yet pumped about science in cycle two, that this is the experiment that is going to get you pumped and your students pumped. And if it doesn't, but that's okay. It takes all kinds, but clearly there's no hope because <laughs> this is awesome. This week, we are demonstrating the principle of how rockets work. You have several different options. Commercially available kits uh, are available. You can purchase what I would consider to be a legit rocket or you can purchase, um, meaning that it, it comes with a kit, it has to be a lot of assemblies required, it has a launch stage, it actually has a fuel cell, um, an ignition that, that you could use to, to, to launch it. Um, but there's plenty of other options. Uh, in our particular campus, we are using Stomp rockets. I'll talk a little bit more about the setup um, here in, in just a second, but this is excellent, uh, and this is gonna be equally, uh, e equally fun and equally cool. What we want to do this week uh, is uh, demonstrate to our students the principle of propulsion. Propulsion is how rockets move. Propulsion takes advantage of Newton's third law that says for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. Sometimes said for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that's exactly the principle that's, that's at work. So when uh, NASA launches uh, their, their rockets up into space, their rockets, of course, are highly engineered, very complicated. They have these large fuel cells uh, that, are, that, that are positioned so that when they ignite those fuel cells, then th they immediately begin to combust and they're shooting out this flame. Uh, it is the force of, of all of that energy that's leaving the bottom of the rocket, then, then it's moving in that direction. And so it is the equal and opposite force is then to lift the rocket up. And that's exactly what it does. And, and it's so powerful, it's able to lift it up into the air straight up and really ultimately to break the gravitational pull of the Earth. It is amazing. I mean, it really is a, a huge feat uh, of engineering. And all uh, rockets operate on that same principle, the principle of propulsion. And that is, uh, there are machines that are designed um, to eject something so that the, the object will move in the opposite uh, direction. And, and that's what we're going to do. So what we have here is a stomp rocket. <clears throat> Pretty easy to assemble. Comes with uh, three pieces, this, this um, airbag, this tube, and then in this launching stage here. So the rocket fits over it here like this. Uh, and then I'll, I'll demonstrate here in, in just a second. Uh, it's worthwhile uh, to me at least noting that uh, I had a little bit of difficulty getting my, my three legs to fit together uh, and stay. This one kept wanting to, uh, to kept coming loose. Um, my lovely assistant suggested that I read the directions to put it together, but uh, clearly that's not what we would do. Uh, as scientists, we would clearly get some cool uh, duct tape. Some, uh, in this case, I have a Velcro tie that we've used to secure uh, the, the, the apparatus together. But the point is, I just want these three legs to be relatively stable because otherwise my, my, the flight of each rocket is gonna be uh, potentially hindered. And so you don't want that. You want the kids uh, to be able to enjoy it. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this rocket back out a little bit. Uh, and so because we are in this huge open space uh, and because we, some people have said sometimes the sound is difficult to hear on our videos, thanks for your patience uh, as we work through them each week. Um, I'm not really going to say anything over there. I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the principle and then I'll come back and we can talk about some more, uh, some more options. Okay, so here we go. Stomp rocket. Uh, the stomp rocket is very cool, very simple principle, right? So in this case, uh, the propulsion is then, of course, being caused. So we have this bag of air, really, connected with the tube to the launching uh, mechanism for the rocket. So when I stomp on the tube, when I stomp on the bag of air, uh, all of that air then is pushed through the tube, up through the launching mechanism, and then it literally runs into the top of that foam rocket and shoots it uh, upward. The, uh, the actual, don't tell my lovely assistant, I did actually read the directions. 
the actual um, material suggests that you have kids run and jump on it, but I figured since I'm not such a little kid, in size at least, uh, that I shouldn't run and jump on it, but try it, especially if you have the ABC Darians, if you have the little guys and girls, um, use your best judgment uh, and with the space that you have, but I think it would be well worth trying. Um, so that would be, this is such a fun experiment. I think all of the kids will want to have a turn doing it, and I would highly suggest uh, you let them do it. Let each kid stomp on it. Let, if you're letting them run, let them run and jump on it. There's a lot of ways you could vary this experiment. Um, for, for, for example, you could have kids of approximately the same age, more or less the same uh, mass. Uh, you could have one run and jump, and you could have one just jump in place on top. See, does that make a difference in how high the rocket goes? Um, for your older kids, you could even talk about the power a little bit of statistics, right? So if we just shoot it up one time, we don't really know a whole lot. But if we shoot it up six times, we're starting to get a much better idea uh, of where it goes. Uh, even more fun, uh, the, the, the um, stomp rocket mechanism is, is designed so that that launching tube can be, so this is how it's normally positioned, right? But it can rotate. So you can tilt it to basically, you can tilt, I believe, a full 90 to, to minus 90, so 180 degrees. Um, so instead of just shooting it up and see how high it goes, a better way if you're really trying to measure distance or measure the power of the rocket is to use distance. And so maybe tilt it at an angle and then let the kids jump on it or stomp on it and see who's shooting it uh, the farthest. Again, if you've got little kids and, and you don't want to set up any kind of competition, if you don't want anybody uh, you know, to get upset, then uh, maybe, maybe let each kid launch their rocket and then go and stand where their rocket landed and then you can bring them back or one of the, the other adult helpers could bring the rockets back so you could keep launching them over and over and then position your kids where they land so just everybody can see, look, look where our rockets uh, went. Again, for bigger, bigger kids, you could talk about the precision of where the rocket lands, how close together uh, the, the rockets actually um, land. Final, my final suggestion for the bigger kids, you could, uh, you could um, get a, 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 um, a compass, no, a protractor, uh, and you could actually measure the angle from the vertical of where your of where your tube is, and then you could see how far it goes, uh, and see is 37 better than 45? What is it? And you'd have to work a little bit to get it to stay at the angle you're setting it. But those would be suggestions. There's lots and lots of opportunities to do those kinds of things uh, and, and to vary this experiment up. On the offhand chance that you're, especially with a stomp rocket, that something breaks, totally possible, right? Totally possible. So I suggest that you bring a little bit of electrical tape with you and maybe even a little saran wrap. So minor tears to the tubing itself or to the, to the, um, the bag of air, I think could be fixed well enough on the day of community day uh, with, some, with either some saran wrap and some, and some electrical tape or maybe just even electrical tape around it by itself. Um, the particular uh, rocket kit that we bought has four rockets with it, and so that's good because if the, if the top, because the other thing where it might tear over time would be the top of the rocket, which is taking the brunt of the air. Um, so if, if it pops a hole, then obviously it won't work either. But again, a little bit of duct tape, a little bit of saran wrap, I think will go a long way uh, to fixing it. But the one we have comes with four, uh, which gives you uh, some options. And then finally, there are kits available that have glow-in-the-dark rockets. Now I'm pretty sure most communities meet during the daytime, uh, but if somehow there was, I don't know, uh, if there was a way, maybe a gymnasium or something where you could turn the lights off uh, and launch some glow-in-the-dark rockets, that would be super, super, super cool. Uh, this is a really fun experiment. Your kids uh, will enjoy it, and I hope that you will too. This is Cycle 2, Week 9 Science Rockets.